I'm going that way. Where are you? Uh, I couldn't imagine her living in such misery. She had fallen so low. I don't want to turn the light off. Where are you? Oh. Well, that was trippy. I have no matches. Oh, shit. And I can't read anything because it's in the dark. I don't want to turn that off. I can read this one. William Vesper's Diary, Excerpt 4, October 4th, 1916. When the moon appears at night, the shadow stops shouting, so I watch it as much as I can. I feel warmth in my body. I talk to it so it would stay. When I stop watching, it's still here in front of my eyes for a while, as if it could stay in my mind. I believe that's the reason I love night more than day, even though the night is very dangerous because of the shadows. And because of Mother, if the moon could kill her, I might be saved. Excuse me. And the moon would take her place. I am only 12 and I don't want to die like that in the dark. So he's afraid of the dark his whole life. Um, what is that in the top part of the screen? I don't know. From that hole I could see the moon. Could it be pure luck? I got a trophy for looking at the moon. Okay. I can't do anything in the dark. Okay, I'm in the same room as I was in, but... According to the marks on the floor, the bed was moved often. Okay. So do I have to move the bed? Yes. Ugh. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> I saw the light there. I was like, um, do I do that? Okay. Oh. Pain was weak maybe with another blow. The painting was covering a spy hole. Things are getting murkier and murkier. Mercurier. Murkier. Oh god. This is oh yeah, that was gonna be bad. Okay. Cool. These matches were covered with ghostly residue. No use. What does that even mean? Ghostly residue. What the hell is that? What is ghostly residue? Oh, okay. Alright. But seriously, ghostly residue? Really? The fuck am I supposed to think that is? Oh, great. I get to go into the room with a freaking ghost here. But there's light in here, so... That's weird. But there's matches. Margaret's Diary, Excerpt 14, September 15th, 1911. I found Henry arching on his bed, naked, grasping the sheets as if they were chains. When Sarah entered, she screamed, he is possessed. I told her to wake up the servants and go look for Dr. Rosenthal. She was too happy to leave. Was this is when he was having seizures? I came close to Henry. In the darkness, his eyes looked like two balls of mercury, the eyes of his son. He had scars all over his chest, inflicted by his own nails. He grasped the sleeve of my gown and hissed. There you are, whore. He dragged me towards him, towards the obscene swell of his crotch. Ugh. The past and present were one, drawing a sinister bloody line to the future. He was lost, erect man, like my father. I was doomed. God had turned his back on me. Oh. So something was wrong with him. The obscene swell of his crotch. Yeah. Uh, that happened. Sweet. 
And then there's some here. Awesome. And there's a book. Margaret's Diary, Excerpt 13, September 15th, 1911. It happened tonight, around 1 a.m. The house was quiet. Sarah had taken William to bed after dinner, and Henry had left the living room around 10 p.m., saying he was tired. I thought we were past trying to forge excuses. I was painting in my room when I heard the yell. My heart stopped. I thought it was a delusion, but the yell resonated once again, a yell of ancient fear reaching out from the abyss, a door that I thought locked for good just slammed open in my mind. And behind it was a frightened child who thought her father was coming back from the dead to take her. I quickly pulled myself together. I went out in the hall. The yells were coming from Henry's room. William was awake and about to enter his father's room. I sent him back to his bed. Despite his tears, I knew too well what was waiting inside. Oh, boy. So there's, there's a lot more going on than uh, anyone wants to believe. Toilet paper still waiting for its transfer to the toilets. It may have been Selena's lipstick, a sacred relic. Was Selena living here, or was it just a madman's delusions? Oh, I got a brush. The kind of tool a woman always needs in front of the mirror. Okay. Let's look what else is in here. A bottle of French perfume was probably very expensive. What's that? The label says cyanide, not your everyday perfume. Was someone trying to kill him? Some sort of goddess of fertility. This is getting weirder and weirder. Was I really the man in the mirror? I look like a dead man. Sometimes it felt as if the house didn't want to lose its grandeur. Oh. I don't want to do that yet. I want to go out here and check shit out that I couldn't check out before. This house was too big for a single and isolated child. child been trapped here for much too long. Oh god. I found a drawing of a kid. When was it drawn? Yeah, the kid drawing like people getting fucked up and shit. Right, I read that one. I did not read this one. William Vesper's Diary, Excerpt 19, June 30th, 1928. The voices came back one by one. I thought I was forever free. I was so naive. That corruption runs too deep. I had to do it again tonight. There was a new girl downstairs, tied up on the slut's throne. Her hair as black as mother's. Give me the shivers, but they justify the killing. I only touch her when I am wearing gloves. I need to polish my approach. The first time was too brutal, too rash. Luna is subtle. She knows blood is precious. One cannot pour it out of rage or fear. The act has to be fully conscious. Using drugs, as some Indian tribes do, could amplify my perception of the ritual. But importing them will take some time. In any case, Luna is weak tonight, but she is still there, waiting, curious to see me act. So now he's got drugs involved. Great! At least these empty bottles had been useful. Selena, motionless sentinel, was expecting something from me. Yeah, I know, I know. Astronomy books, the moon, craters, seas, and myths. Alright. Time to go back out here and... Uh, cleaning products covered with dust for the most part. Is there anything else I can look at before this match goes out so I don't waste it all? A huge quantity of blood. It made me feel sick. Great. Broken glass because of a storm or a quarrel? Alright. Chair was blocked in the door. No need to ask why. Time to light a match. 
Time to waste a match. Time to open the door. Oh! Oh god, chair! Oh god! No, don't! Ugh. Dude, really? That's- that's your answer. You run back into the fucking thing that's chasing you. Good job. Now I gotta do this all over again. Alright, let's try this again, shall we? This time, just kind of run. Go into there. Okay. For anything. Well, actually. Let's give this hairbrush to her. Before, and then save before anything. was her story? Her beauty? Her light? Brushing her hair. They didn't match the sadness in her eyes. We were bound. She was trying to guide me, to draw me to her. Like a dream which has to be dreamt just to be. She had helped me stay alive until now. This was more than enough to want her presence. She walks into the closet. Time to save. Cause I don't know what's gonna happen. And I don't want to lose all that progress because I had to do it all over again. Now, I mean, guaranteed, after I die, I know what to do, so it takes me like two minutes to get through it, but still. Still. My guess is I have to go through the uh, thing here and follow her. Maybe. Yep. Secret door? Nothing here surprised me anymore. Oh, great. Lock me in, why don't you? I'm glad I saved. Margaret's Diary, Excerpt 8. August 7th, 1899. What the hell is that noise? Oh, great. There's an obnoxious noise. Uh, I was introduced today to the Vesper son, the one who'd become my husband, and sealed the alliance between our families. Their success in the textile industry was spectacular, but I felt no vigor in that man, Henry. His blood seemed rather poor. He is not tall. He had his tailor not been so efficient. He would have no elegance. But our fortune is past, and we need these people to regain our influence. People only respect money now. Through this alliance, the Vesper will enjoy our contacts within the greatest and oldest families in Boston. Their business, mired by competition and politics, will flourish even more. In many ways, I can't avoid feeling superior to that man in his loyal dog eyes. His voice barely covered the whisper of the sea. The wedding will be celebrated in a couple of months. I'm not really excited, but if my flesh can be the torch of our resurrection, I gladly consent to the sacrifice. So, it was an arranged marriage to seal the alliance between our families. Hmm. So, she was forced to marry him. She didn't even love him. That sucks. Margaret was a bad memory, even for that house. Oh boy. Margaret's Diary, Excerpt 10, April 2nd, 1906. William grows well. He has the pale skin and the weak health of his father. I watch carefully over him. He is very quick for a two-year-old boy. A two-years-old boy, rather. I stimulate him with all sorts of tests and experiences to elevate his soul. Turner's paintings put him in a very strong state of excitement. Bach delights him. He likes things better, bitter, strangely, and he looks intensely at a picture of Jesus. I try reading inside him. I try making sure this was all worth it. Will be strong... Will he be strong enough to be the one of the pillars of this world? God, give me the faith to fight all these doubts. This morning I saw in his eyes a glimpse of light which reminded me of my father. His eyes, like two pits of darkness, are too deep. I don't like it. They scrutinize your soul, looking for a breach. I seized his arm to make him stop, and then I saw Henry, watching me from the doorstep. He keeps me under watch every time I am with the kid. 
So she thinks that William's turning out to be like her father, which I guess was a very bad asshole. This is creepy enough. Oh, I, I need to turn a light on. Or something. I hope there are no ghosts in here. Margaret's paintings reveal a true artistic talent. Yes, yeah, scribbles. Storm was coming. More darkness for us. Oh god. Not literal! Okay, there's matches right there though, so I feel better. Thank you, God. There's a snake on the wall. The snake had reminded me of the original sin. Oh god, there's more to this room than I wanted there to be. Oh fucking hell no! Margaret's Diary, Excerpt 9, March 6th, 1904. Dr. Rosenthal confirmed it. I'm pregnant. Sarah, that poor wrench who reads more lines in the hands and in books, believes it will be a girl. Yet something is bothering me. I experience fatigue and nausea, of course, but I feel worried because of this mass growing inside me. Like a star about to collapse, it will be a boy. I know it. His ego is weighing on my entrails. Entrails, sorry. I had a number of nightmares in which father came back haunting me, and one of them I was laying naked in a pile of black ashes, the ashes of my ancestors. I couldn't move while father, his mouth glued to my belly, was whispering words which burned my skin, and then he raised his head and told me he will be mad, even crazier than I was, and then he plunged his head into my stomach. Ugh. And when he raised his head again, he had the child in his maw, the maw of a wolf. His jaws then snapped with an awful sound. I woke up, the yell of the baby resonating in my own. This boy will be born under the steel star of the Ventercross, our seal. I will heal him, whatever he brings into this world. So she knew even before he was born that he was going to be like fucking demon child. Wow. That's scary. Um... Is there any kind of light or anything I can do, maybe? Oh, there's a ghost in there. I see it. I see the ghost. This old kind of lamp had no switch. Margaret's Diary, Excerpt 20, August 26, 1913, Henry died today. His last word was for William, whom he called in a whisper. He asked Sarah to play a jazz record before he passed away. Nothing would surprise me anymore. After a number of meetings with the managing board, I will officially assume duties as the Vesper manufacturer. I already noticed a number of issues in the management of the company, all linked to Henry's romantic nature. I think I can clear most of them and improve the benefits. We will change the strategy and prepare for the future. Vesper should not be the brand of the poor anymore. God, it's all about the fucking money and politics and shit, and that sucks. Uh, you don't see me, ghost! You don't see me, ghost! Oh boy. Oh boy. You don't see me go sitting on the edge of the bed there. Don't see me. As long as I, it seems like as long as I don't flash the light in her face, she's okay. But it still doesn't make me feel better. There's something here. Note to self, sabotage, electric light kills the shadows, these dark doubles of Margaret figured it out, and now they regularly sabotage any electrical apparatus, so the wiring's trip in the middle of the night. With this cruel game, they are trying to wear me out, and it is working. I almost no longer sleep. Jesus. God, I need free hands to do everything. Oh, there's a body in this bed, too. Shit. Uh, alright. I gotta find- follow this cord. Somewhere. The body was unrecognizable. Sight unbearable. Where the fuck does this go? Oh god, no. 
fuck does this go? Offering of books have been made to that body. Jesus, where the fuck is this light plugged into? Is it over here by this ghost? You don't see me, you don't see me, you don't see me, it's okay. Ah, uh, okay, the switch is right there. Let me see if I can... You don't see me. You don't hear me. You don't see me. You don't know me. I am not here. I turn the light on. I am now going to extinguish you. Sorry in advance. I don't know if I can. Well, I can do that. She's still there? She's gone. She's gone. Alright. Young Margaret, a sweet face pinned over a storm. Alright, so something tells me when the light goes away, she returns. So I need two hands to push this. Alright, so we got that. There's a couple other things that we need. One of them is... this because there was something there too that I needed god damn it alright I just gotta stop wasting matches honestly <laughs> got a trophy for wasting matches hurrah oh it's for the curtain okay And then there's a chest. Alright. Cool. Oh. Alright. What's in here? There's a key. I see the key. Okay. These books are covering the modern evolutions of fashion. Something tells me there's a a being in here with me. Wait. I didn't read this one. Margaret's Diary, Excerpt 17, July 6, 1913. I paint all the time. Ideas come by themselves, and I make the paintings as fast as I can cope for their urgency. Sometimes it feels like it's me painting. It's not me painting anymore, but another Margaret, more instinctive, more animal. What's happening to me? Sometimes I feel like I slept and I wake up looking at someone else's work. My painting bears the marks. The movement is visible in the thick paste. The hues are darker than they've used to be. I even notice small cuts in the canvas. When I leave my workshop, it feels like my eyesight is better, as if it is craving for light, as if it's deprived of it while I was painting. I forgot to mention Henry has more and more attacks. Sarah wants me to call the Vicar Hopper. Is it Visar? Visar? Vicar? Whatever. Maybe it's coming... Maybe his coming death has a role to play in my rebirth. Is it the price to pay to be a free woman? Hmm. Interesting. So someone shut that off. I wonder who it is. Maybe the ghost is back. I 
not sure. I'd like to turn it back on though. Okay. Room was like a slow poison. It was time to leave. What's this? Crap. Um. Piano? Something in the middle of the room was calling to me. The piano, maybe? this. William. From William to Selena, first letter. Dear Selena, I want to thank you again for the music box. I displayed it prominently in the living room. I imprinted its sweet little melody inside my head so I can hear it in my dreams. I can then see you in my dreams, and for someone who doesn't sleep much, your night visits are a blessing. You are the talisman that protects me from these nightmares. You said that the serenade for a moon girl I wrote for you saved you. I can't believe you were about to take your own life. If my art, the same art I thought pointless, has that effect on you, then I will keep writing for you to keep you alive and make your life better. I place the sheet music in the safety of the music box. That way our voices can still sing together every time the night is falling. William Vesper. Uh. Piano was begging me to play music that was floating in the air. Oh! I was gonna say, I heard her. I don't see her though. How can you open the doors if you're a ghost? trying to do when she jumped to put an end to a dream she seemed sentenced to live again and again to give me proof she needed me just like her I wanted to escape but I wanted to escape with her and in one piece yeah uh. Selena tried to take her own life, and her ordeal was never-ending. Even death rejected her. That suicide revealed something that was missing from her life. But that failure carried hope. I needed to find what could save her. So is that how she died? She killed herself? Oh. Oh, that's just- okay. Never mind. That's just the candle. Same. Same. Okay. I'm getting really turned around, sorry. Shit. I'm running out of matches. I need them so badly. Matches! Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I need a save point or something. I'm just trying to explore the room. Piles of books about piano music composition. Use the door. I wanna. Is this? Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. I will look around a little bit and use this matchup. Um, move around. So it was the Earth, weirdly located at the center of the solar system. Alright, I just just spinning it. I didn't know what to do. 
Oh, there's a fireplace. Fire could be an ally, but I need to find some wood. Is there wood here? Okay, let's find some wood before we save our game. Let's see what's over here. Uh, William Vesper's Diary Excerpt 22, September 17th, 1923. I ordered some rare recordings of Jelly Roll Morton, the original Dixieland ja jazz band, Louis Armstrong and his Hot Five, Bessie Smith, Fat Fats Waller, the Fletcher Henderson Orchestra, Duke Ellington. Names that have been sticking in my head since I listened to these jazz records with my father as I was sitting on this lap. I would love to tell him how much of an influence he had on my life not only because that music made me more human but also because he's given me the chance to play it i have fulfilled my desire to be surrounded with musical artifacts my chapel will be devoted to jazz to light it's so weird because you're you're picking these up all out of order so you're not really sure what order this stuff is supposed to be in oh i got a log hi selena Oh god, is she just going to continually do that now? I bet she will. Because that's what ghosts do. Norway by Selena Sandvik. Hush, I am 16 this morning and it is snowing. I am trembling in the garden and it is snowing on the golden hair I brush. Dad plays the piano. He calls me Calypso. Like the flower in the fjords, he says, Sing a kvedding, a kvedding. Sing for the spring, which saw you twig and now a sapling. Sing, hush. It is snowing in the garden. The flakes of my whispers fall on the old fingers of my music-playing father. On his cheek a kiss, and I walk to the woods in bliss. Hush, sing. The whisper of my footsteps carves a score soon forgotten. In a soil made of cotton, on Norway it's snowing. I am sixteen this morning, and it is snowing. Hush. No need for a song, not yet, it's too strong. Nature's own jazz jams on my body. So let me dance, I fly and take a chance. I sing, sing, sing. These songs are so weird. Oh, look at that. That wood could give me light and heat if I found a fireplace. Hell yeah. I'm gonna go do that right now while you do that. And that. And that and that. Okay. Is that... Oh, I thought that was matches. It's okay. It's fine if it's not. No big deal. Was that a note lying in the middle of the ground? It was. Victim's note number four. Miss Adams. Mr. Auerbach will receive you next Friday at 8 p.m. at his home, 36 Fairmont Street in Black Lake. As I told you when we first met, he is an important man. His moments of relaxation are as essential to him as his business meetings, and this is my responsibility that everything goes well. I don't need to remind you that in those difficult times, the appreciation of such a man could change a lot of things for you. We expect you to be irreproachably clean and fully devoted to his entertainment. Whatever he might ask you, you will indulge. Of course, do not be late. Kenneth Lynch, August L. Ockerbach's personal secretary. Are these notes for the prostitutes, I'm wondering? I'm I'm confused because there's there's victims and then one of the other papers I picked up said that a bunch of prostitutes are going missing. So is this how they scheduled shit before they had like pimps? I I don't know. It's it's an era I'm not really familiar with, so but it's very interesting to think about. Put that in and put this in and then light it before this goes out sweet nice I think could be wrong but I think the light on the other side went out how's that? Another vision, another mind symbol. That one was the moon. Like a flash of light on my mind, I saw that Mayan vision of Earth. This picture appeared to me as an esteric symbol of Saturn. Oh, 
Oh. Oh. Um. I had a vision. It was the mind symbol of the sun. Alright, I'm not touching that anymore because I don't know what I'm doing. Let me look around here a little bit. Yeah, it went out anyway, so. Well, this is all boarded up, too. William Vesper, the prodigal son carrying the family burden. Prodigal son. Oh. The globe could open, but something was blocking it. It's probably why I have to turn those things. It seemed the globe could be opened thanks to some kind of mechanism. If someone wanted to conceal its contents, it probably meant it was noteworthy. Yep. Probably. These shelves were like a tribune for philosophers and scientists. <sighs> Alright, well, I think next time we will pick up and uh, we will explore more of this room, try to figure out these puzzles, and see what other shit is in store for us. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this so far. This is incredibly eerie. And I'm really getting into this game. Um, so stay tuned. Next time we'll pick up where we left off. Until then, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.